no matter how hard I try, I have this tendency to overload myself. And to give you an, ex to give you an example of that, this is a task list, uh, a brain dump, so to speak, of all the things that I have decided that I want to do or should be doing or whatnot uh, in this one list. And so typically what I do whenever I get really, really overwhelmed uh, by the amount of work that I have in front of me, I use a technique that I learned from uh, writer Carol in the Bullet Journal book. So the Bullet Journal is a, it's a physical notebook. It's a note-taking system that you can use to stay on top of it. It's more, it's kind of a combination. Um, it's more or less a task management system and time management system, uh, but in a physical notebook. Uh, and then there, they, he has a lot of great advice. And one of them that has stuck, even though I don't, I don't do the physical bullet journaling anymore, is this this exercise of a, a mental inventory. So the first step of the mental inventory is you just do you do a brain dump. You get a, a brand new sheet of paper, and in this case, I'm going to show you this process in Obsidian. And you just write down every single task or thing that you have in your mind that's uh, overwhelming you. And as you can see here, here's my list. Uh, I haven't counted it, but there's quite a number of things. Um, I started with about half as many items this week, and I just didn't really get through a lot. It was a, it was a busy week, a lot of appointments, and I was uh, attending a conference, and so there just wasn't a lot of time to, to kind of uh, plow through the to-do list, so to speak. Uh, so as you can see here, I have this giant list, and it's a combination of tasks and, and desires. And so what you do in the mental inventory is you break them out into three columns. You break them into uh, working on what you're currently doing, what you should be doing, um, which is you know less desirable, obviously, and then what you want to do. And so the, the idea is that you break these out, and it makes it easier to start to whittle away what it is. Um, and you just get a full picture of everything that's in your mind. And usually the point, uh, the indicator that I need to do this exercise is that I stop using my planner because there's too much in my head, too much to capture in a day or a week. Um, but when I start to do that, I start to, I feel like a locomotive that has been derailed. So I'm still trying to go 100 miles an hour, but I don't have any rails that are helping me stay on track. Uh, and that causes a lot of stress, obviously. And that is the indication typically when I start to have too much stress and I feel overwhelmed that I need to do this exercise and I need to get back on track and handle on the tasks that I have because I'm probably overloading myself with a bunch of stuff that I don't need to do, but I think that I need to do. And so I used a workspace in Obsidian um, called Mental Inventory to split this out. So on the left-hand side here, you see the mental inventory that I just showed you with my giant list of things. And what you'll see over here are um, each of the, the list basically broken out into three parts. And there's a various stages to this. So the very first thing that I did was I took this list and I started with the working on. So it's pretty clear, you know, what are you working on? What's on your to-do list today? Uh, what's the most urgent, important things? And so for me, I had um, a preparing for onboarding for a new team member. I wanted to record this video here because I thought it would be a useful exercise because I've just spent the last two weeks being relatively stressed out with a bunch of to-dos, as you can see. And I wanted to walk through the process of that with some real contacts, with a real example, instead of a, a metaphorical one with to-do lists that aren't really that actionable. These are things that are going on in my daily life right now today that I need to get a handle on. Um, and then, so in here I have to record that video, th that video um, finish the instructional read of the Go programming language. I'm trying to get up to speed with learning that language. And then I had uh, by AirPods, you'll notice that crossed out. And I'll come back to that in a second. Next, uh, what I do is I'll go, what should I be working on? Those are usually obvious that you that you feel guilty about not doing so this is typically my guilty list where i should be doing i should be converting uh, a diagram from this meeting that i had last week into some kind of wireframe i have this this film the fallout for a presentation a speaking opportunity that i have that i need to do um and i should do that you know like i'm more <laughs> more excited about presenting than I am to all the prerequisite stuff. So that's why it's in that list. I need to pay a medical bill, which is always fun. Uh, upload a podcast that I recorded about a month ago that I haven't uploaded uh, because I've never written it down. It's just constantly um, interrupting me because I haven't written it down anywhere. Um, I had the idea, I had a couple of ideas that would have been good to do that I should do is to turn my uh, time blocking article that I had posted to a short ebook because it's easier 
more easily consumed in that manner. And I have some more thoughts I could add in there. Um, same thing with post newsletters, LinkedIn cross posting gets more visibility. I should do it. I don't want to do it. Um, and in this case I've decided I'm not going to do it. Uh, and then the want to. And so these are the fun things in the list that you want. Uh, and the idea is here is that you get to whittle away these lists independently because it's very overwhelming, this giant list. And it seems kind of silly to have this, like, okay, you're going to do these multiple steps at different phases, but it's super useful because they have different, um, these tasks in should, want, and current um, have different parameters for your decisions. And so it's easier to make decisions on crossing things off want because you're seeing them combat with other things that you want to do. And the same thing for should to do. You can use urgency as your way to determine what should be done in that list sooner or later. Um, now, the next step in the bullet journal method is you'd be moving all these tasks around uh, the f um, after you've cut them out. So let's just dive into that real quick. So you can see by AirPods. Uh, that came up, I was on a walking conversation, a walking meeting with a friend, and I was like, it would be nice to have some AirPods. However, um, I don't go on them enough to, to really care about that right now. So I'm sure that name will resurface itself, and I just crossed it off. Now, the other ones are checked, um, and that's because I have moved them into the migration. But I'll get back to that. Uh, so then I, I start in the working, I move to the should, and then I go to the want. So on the should, I've crossed off a number of things. One of them was to import permanent notes into Obsidian. So in the morning, what I've been doing is, is uh, kind of rereading to a degree, skimming over some books that I'm using as research, and I'm uh, backporting them into permanent notes so I can add them into my slip box. Um, and I, I prefer writing physical notes, so I'm taking on physical note cards, index cards, and taking the notes, putting them with the book, and then I will eventually convert them into Obsidian instead of typing them directly in. I've just found that that works better for me. So I have three books that I've done that with, or at least two books that I've done that with. I'm working on a third. Um, but I can't do it until I get my vaults cleaned up, so I'm just going to cross that off. That need will resurface. And the same thing for get a quote for insulating the garage. It's fall. It's going to get cold, but I have heaters in there. It's a good idea, but it's not critical right now. I'm going to cross it off. And the same thing with these other, other items I mentioned. Uh, and then I go up here and I, I had some other ideas. I wanted to start a twist community, cross that off. It's just not important right now. Um, I found this really awesome GoLang tutorial series on YouTube. Again, it's not it's kind of redundant. I'm already reading a book on the fundamentals, so I should just focus on that and not be distracted by the YouTube videos, even though it's, it's easier to digest. digest. Um, and then there's other ones that I haven't um, moved over yet. So the first step is you split them out. Second step is you cross off what you're not going to do because you're seeing it in context of other things that are competing for your attention and time, and it makes it more obvious which ones you should cut. Now, after you've cut, there's obviously some things that you need to do, um, and there are other things that you just really, really want to do that are good ideas. And so you can see, um, let's see, if we cross off these ones that are crossed um, with a check mark. I've started to move into my different planners. So uh, part of the time blocking is that you have like a weekly planner. And so I've been using this little uh, cheat of, so that the name of the weekly planner is really just the month. And then inside that one note, I have the month, the weeks of the month in there. And I use an alias uh, of October because it's easier to remember that than to type out, you know, digitally the, the date. So I have week three, and what I've started to do is take these lists and move them into my planner now. And this is the same thing that you would do in the physical bullet journal. You would move them into your your future log or your month or your daily. And that I, I'd cut out the, the monthly and the future log just because it just seemed like unnecessary work, and I never really used it. It helped me catalog it, but... What I do now is I typically take that task, whatever it is over here, I break it down into something actionable, and making progress on that is enough to keep momentum in it. Um, if you, you're shoving stuff into your future log and having to worry about things months and months in the future, you're probably overloading yourself and not working on the right tasks. So what I did was I went through each of these lists and I started to move them into my planner. So I moved the reading, the go book, I want to do that today. I've dedicated some time on my planner. I'm recording this video so I can, you know, check that off nicely. Um, I want to pay the medical bill. I want to up, upload the latest podcast because it's just eating me that I haven't done that. And then this uh, usefulness, harpers.pdf is a really interesting 
article that I wanted to read. So I'm just going to, my task for today is just to print it and I will have it, that artifact of being printed um, will remind me to read it this weekend. So I'll just have some weekend reading. And then I want to clean up the vault. Um, and you'll see in a second in my daily planner, I've broken that out. But if we go down here, the items that I um, didn't cross off have been moved over into my next week. So I moved, uh, you know, I broke down the onboarding a new team and made it a little bit more concrete. So set up a team's meeting for onboarding instructions. So I have a, a list of literature I need to consume and read for onboarding and then set up a meeting and just kind of be uh, an onboarding buddy, so to speak, to the new person uh, joining. And then I, I will fill out that form. So I will do that Monday. Um, and I'm sure there will be plenty other. That's not just all the things I'll do Monday. At the end of the day, today, I'll, I'll plan more. Um, Tuesday is when I'm going to take the uh, wireframes, which I should be doing. So if I check that now, I converted this roadmap thing into a single actionable item where I'm going to create um, the wireframe using, and this is a meeting note that I had uh, as well to just some suggestions. And then I really wanted to watch the new future of work. It was part of a research summit at Microsoft. That seemed really fascinating, the research that they've been doing uh, inside the area of the hybrid work for uh, hybrid work environment, since we're not just remote or just in person anymore. It's this new world. And they've been doing a lot of research in that. They have a 160-something page research paper. And so this was basically a talk um, expanding, elaborating, and showcasing um, the work that, that was done in that research paper. And I really want to read that because it seems fascinating. Um, and you can see I've kind of checked those off. And then I also wanted to re uh, watch this session over here. So I moved that to next Friday because it had been recorded so I can watch it after the fact. Uh, and then one little thing I guess that I didn't add in the planner was this why I don't name my notes. That was a question I got on Reddit. Um, and I've just tagged it with YouTube ideas. So if I go to my tags, I can see that and I can just, I could browse to it. I'm trying to, I haven't found a really great way to backlog video ideas, um, but I'm going to give that a shot. So that, that, that is about it. So once all of those are done, I kind of check them off or cross them off and I move them in a planner. And now I have a more actionable day and week for next week. So if we look at uh, today's note, you'll see that I have record this video at 9.30. It's now 10.30. So I'm just approaching my time to do uh, the Go pro programming language. So I'll read you know as much as I can in an hour. Um, and then my shallow batch is where I said I would do all those other kind of kind of tasks. So within my day, I block out 30 minutes to an hour for just the miscellaneous tasks that I need to do uh, and print that paper. And then I've dedicated some time at 1 o'clock my time to clean up my vault so I can at least start making progress on that and then import those other notes that I had crossed off my list. So that, in a nutshell, is the mental inventory tactic from, again, the bullet journal from uh, Ryder Carroll, I believe is the author's name and the inventor of that system. And this is a digital version of it in Obsidian with a couple tweaks that have worked well for me. So once you find yourself or when you find yourself uh, overwhelmed, rather, give the mental inventory a try. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments.